how to survive a nuclear war. As you may be aware, nuclear weapons are currently the world's most dangerous weapons ever produced, and explosions can result in significant damage and casualties due to blast, heat, and radiation. Still, there are ways to keep your family safe by knowing what to do and being prepared if this occurs. And if you don't know what a nuclear weapon is, let me explain. A nuclear weapon is a device that creates an explosion by using a nuclear reaction. Nuclear weapons can range in size from small personal devices to weapons carried by missiles. A nuclear explosion could happen with or without a few minutes notice. Its fallout is most dangerous in the first few hours after detonation, when radiation levels are at their highest. Fallout takes a long time to reach ground level, often more than 15 minutes in areas outside of the blast damage zones. You have enough time to avoid significant radiation exposure by following these simple steps or methods. And the first thing you should do is get inside. To avoid radiation, enter the nearest building you see. And if you have time to look around, brick or concrete structures are best. Remove contaminated clothing and wipe or wash unprotected skin if you were outside after the fallout. Because hand sanitizer won't protect you from falling out. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth as much as possible. Disinfectant wipes should not be used on your skin. Then, go to the basement or the center of the building and stay far away from the exterior walls and roof, as well as keep a distance of at least six feet between yourself and non-family members. Also, if you're sheltering with people who aren't family, wear a mask if at all possible. Children under the age of two, people who have difficulty breathing, and those who are unable to remove masks on their own should not use them. So, unless local authorities give you other instructions, you should stay inside for at least 24 hours. Until then, continue to practice social distancing by wearing a mask and maintaining a distance of at least six feet between yourself and non-family members. Family members should remain inside, and then they reunite later to avoid dangerous radiation exposure. Also, keep your pets inside. Then, turn on any available medium for official information, such as when it is safe to exit and where you should go. Now that you're probably wondering what will work in these massive radiations, rest assured that battery-operated and hand-crank radios will work. Cell phone, text messaging, television, and internet services, on the other hand, may be disrupted or unavailable. Now, you must be wondering what you should do if you don't know anything like this is going to happen. But what should you do if you do know it's going to happen? So, the first step is to begin preparing right now. Begin by locating shelters and determining the best shelter location near where you spend a lot of time, such as home, work, or school. And believe it or not, the best locations are underground and in the midst of larger structures. Continuing on identifying appropriate shelters to seek in the event of a detonation while commuting. As a result of COVID-19, many places you may pass on your way to and from work may be closed or may not have regular operating hours where you live at the time. People like Bill Gates believe the worst of COVID-19 is yet to come and we can't get this scenario out of our heads in order to better prepare ourselves. Returning to the subject, outdoor areas, vehicles, and mobile homes do not provide adequate protection. Look for basements or the central area of large multi-story buildings. Also, make sure you have an emergency supply kit for places where you may be required to stay for more than 24 hours. Bottled water, canned foods, emergency medications, a hand crank or battery powered radio to get information if the power goes out, a flashlight, and extra batteries for essential items should all be included. Store supplies for three or more days if possible. Set aside items like soap, hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol, disinfecting wipes, and general household cleaning supply that you can use to disinfect surfaces you touch on a regular basis if you are able to. Remember to consider each person's individual needs, including medication. Don't forget about your pet's requirements. Extra batteries and charging devices for phones and other important equipment should be obtained. 
you already know that being cautious and prepared allows you to avoid unnecessary outings and handle minor medical issues at home, reducing the need for urgent care and hospitals. Keep in mind that not everyone can afford to respond by stockpiling essentials. For those who can afford it, making essential purchases and gradually building up supplies in advance will allow for longer periods between shopping trips. This helps to protect those who were unable to obtain essentials prior to the outbreak and must shop more frequently. Additionally, avoid WIC labeled products to ensure that those who rely on them have access to them. Now let's talk about what to do after 24 hours. As an example, if you were outside after the fallout, immediately after you are inside the shelter. To remove fallout and radiation from your body, remove your outer layer of contaminated clothing. If at all possible, avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth. To remove any fallout from skin or hair that was not covered, take a shower or wash with soap and water. If you can't wash or shower, wipe any exposed skin or hair with a wipe or a clean wet cloth. After the fallout, clean up any pets that were outside. Brush your pet's coat gently to remove any fallout particles and, if available, wash your pet with soap and water. Furthermore, Packaged food items or items that we use when we're inside a building are safe to eat or drink. Do not eat or drink anything that has been exposed to the elements and may have been contaminated by fallout. When authorities say it is safe to exit, listen for instructions on how and where to get medical help if you are sick or injured. Contact your healthcare provider for instructions if you are sick and require medical attention. If you're at a public shelter, Tell the staff right away so they can contact a nearby hospital or clinic. If you have a medical emergency, dial 911 and tell the operator if you have COVID-19 or suspect you may have it. Put on a mask if you can before help arrives. Then, there's another thing you can do, which is to engage virtually with your community via video and phone calls. And don't be afraid to admit that you're worried or stressed. You must take care of your body and seek help if you are distressed. Many people may be fearful and anxious about what happened during the coronavirus outbreak in 2019, COVID-19. As a result, the threat of a nuclear explosion can add to the tension. Follow the CDC's stress management guidelines during a traumatic event. Now, after hearing all this, you might be wondering what exactly happens to a human body if it gets attacked by nuclear radiation. So now, at the end of the video, let's find that out too. Many scientists have already looked into this issue. Their work is surprisingly unknown, most likely because no one wants to consider the unthinkable in peacetime. However, we are no longer in peacetime, and multiple mushroom clouds are once again looming over our planet. In 1945, the United States dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, providing two real-world examples of nuclear weapons' effects on human populations. The nuclear blast, intense radiant heat from the fireball, and ionizing radiation killed 140,000 people in Hiroshima and 73,000 in Nagasaki in an instant or within five months. The neutron and gamma rays released by nuclear fission in the blasts caused acute radiation sickness, ARS, in many survivors, later known as hibakusha in Japanese. Bloody diarrhea, hair loss, fever, and extreme thirst were among the symptoms. Many people died later. They were exposed to radioactive fallout from the bomb as well as direct radiation from the fireballs. The Hibakusha's long-term effects of radiation have been extensively studied and include increased rates of leukemia and solid cancers. However, being exposed to an atomic bomb did not automatically result in death. Among the 100,000 or so survivors, the excess rates of cancer were around 850 in the following years, and leukemia was less than 100. Now, I hope after hearing all these signs and symptoms, you may now have started thinking of preparing for it. And if that's true, then don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel that has shown you the other side of the world.